Edith Cavell was born in a place called Swordston in England in 1865. As the little girl lay in her mother's arms, no one had any idea that God was preparing her for a very special task. Her father was a minister of the local church, and it was him who taught her to read, to write, to do mathematics, to read her Bible, and even learn some foreign languages. Her mother, on the other hand, taught her cooking, gardening, and housekeeping. When she had finished her schooling, she decided to become a governess for different families around Europe. She was very good at it, and she loved the children that she taught. While she was working for a family in Belgium, she got news that her father was very ill. So she went back to England to look after him. She lovingly nursed him back to health. She enjoyed nursing him so much that she decided that she was going to become a nurse. So at the age of 30, she signed up for a nursing course. Although the training was tough and she worked very long hours, often only finishing at half past nine at night, she loved the work and had many opportunities to speak to people about the Lord Jesus Christ and to pray with her patients and read to them from the Bible. She did very well in her course, and she had a deep compassion for her patients and was very passionate about her work, and in time she qualified as a nurse. In 1907 she was asked to become the matron of the first nurses training hospital in Belgium. She accepted and started with four student nurses. She cared deeply for her students and trained them both physically and spiritually, taking any opportunity to encourage and nurture them. Under her excellent leadership, the training center grew and in five years they had 60 students. All the graduates were known for their gentleness, compassion and great competence. She was still in Belgium in 1914 when World War I started and soon the German army invaded Belgium. Life became difficult for Edith in Belgium because of the war and because she was from England and Germany was at war with England. Edith, however, decided to help anybody who came to the hospital, whether they were English or German. She felt it was her Christian duty as a nurse to help any person who, who was in need. The hospital soon became a haven for English soldiers trying to get away from the Germans. Edith set up a secret way of helping old soldiers escape from Belgium into Holland and back to England. It wasn't long before the Germans got suspicious and started to regularly search the hospital. In spite of the regular searches by the Germans, she was able to rescue over 200 British soldiers, sneaking them out in many different ways. Her compassion for suffering people would not allow her to turn anyone away, and eventually she was betrayed by a German spy who reported her to the German authorities. She was soon arrested and taken to prison and then put in solitary confinement for three months. At her trial, she refused to lie or deny anything trusting that it was God who had called her to do the work and to help her to save the lives of all those soldiers. She was not ashamed of what she had done. At her trial, she refused to lie or deny anything that she had done because she believed that it was God who had called her to serve and save the lives of those soldiers 
She was not ashamed of anything that she had done. The German judges obviously resented her courage as she boldly and confidently told them of how she had helped over 200 soldiers escape from under their noses. So they sentenced her to death by firing squad. Back in her cell, Edith read from her Bible, saying that she found the book of Revelation especially comforting to her at that time. In one of the books that she read, she underlined the following sentence, There is none to help me, none to deliver and save me, but thou, O Lord, my Saviour, to whom I commit myself and all that is mine, that thou mayest keep watch over me and bring me to life everlasting. An English chaplain visited her the night before she was to be shot. She shook hands with him and asked him to be seated. She said, I have no fear or shrinking. This time of rest has been a great mercy. This, I would say, standing as I do in view of God and eternity, that I realize that patriotism is not enough. I must have no hatred or bitterness to anyone. In her last remaining hours, she wrote letters to a number of people, amongst others, her students, and she told them to continue with the good work that they were doing and to look to God for strength. At five o'clock on the morning that she was to be executed, she got up, made her bed, and waited patiently for the guards to come. When they arrived at six o'clock, she had just written in her prayer book, Edith Cavell died at 7 a.m. October 12, 1915, with all my love to my mother. They took her to the firing range where she was to be executed. She told the pastor who was to accompany her, Tell my loved ones that my soul, I believe, is safe and that I am glad to die for my country. When the firing squad shots rang out, Edith died instantly and she found herself in the presence of her God to receive her reward for her faithfulness. Edith Cavell's life was marked by faithfulness to God wherever she was, even if it was difficult. For her faithfulness, she is now in the presence of her Lord and Savior, where, where she will be forever. Boys and girls, will you be faithful? Will you be faithful to God wherever you are, no matter what it takes? Pray and ask God to help you to be faithful, that you may serve Him and bring glory to His name. Ask Him, and He will help you. Amen.